A very good morning to you, my dear sisters and brothers, and welcome to Carmel Light, to the day's reflection. Before we begin our reflection, let us invoke the name of the Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is 2nd August, and we are celebrating the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. For our reflection today, we have the gospel passage taken from Matthew chapter 14, 13 to 21. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds, so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once, a hungry beggar knocks the door and begs for food as he has not eaten anything since almost three days. The woman opening the door tells the beggar that she hasn't started cooking as yet. The beggar immediately hands over his visit card to her and requests the lady to give him a call once she has finished cooking. Till then, Without wasting time, he would be begging in the next streets. My dear friends, recent newspapers have made it very clear that COVID-19 could double world hunger by the end of 2020. Meaning to say, this pandemic will deepen global hunger crisis since its economic impact has already hit the world's poorest people hardest. Many go to sleep hungry since the onset of this deadly virus and if the international community fails to act in time, there is a fear that the coronavirus pandemic could trigger famines everywhere in huge proportions hitting the world's most vulnerable nations and also reversing years of progress. Hunger is a condition in which a person, for a sustained period, is unable to eat sufficient food to meet basic nutritional needs. It's a painful sensation or state of weakness caused by the need of food. In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, satisfying physiological needs like food, water, warmth and rest are of prime importance for a human person. They are the basic needs that every human person needs to satisfy on priority basis. Well, the miracle of feeding the 5,000 is the only miracle recorded in all the four Gospels. 
In this touching episode, Jesus satisfies both hidden spiritual hunger of the people and also their genuine physical hunger. This amazing rarity reflects the experience of the Old Testament people who were fed with manna in the wilderness. Like Moses, Jesus too is surrounded by hungry people. This component also mirrors, in a certain sense, Elisha's feeding miracle in 2 Kings chapter 4, 42 to 44, where Elisha has only 20 barley loaves and he feeds 100 people and still there was bread left over. The feeding of the 5000 is a compassion story. It's an abundance story and also a Eucharistic story. It is said several times of Jesus that he was moved with compassion. Now, when Jesus looked upon certain sites, his internal agitation could have been very great. His emotions were certainly very deep. His eyes might have been filled with tears. And people standing around him saw how his big heart was ready to burst with pity for the sorrow upon which his eyes were gazing. He was moved with compassion. His whole nature was agitated with commiseration and sympathy for the sufferers before him. Besides women and children, Jesus was compassionate especially towards those on the edges of society, which made him sometimes break through the barriers. He was concerned about hunger, disease and injustice, but he was also more concerned about people's relationship to God and their destiny in the world to come. Therefore, thousands of people showed up wherever he went. Now, after satisfying the spiritual hunger of these his hearers, he is concerned also of their physical hunger and that makes him say to the disciples, you give them something to eat. The obedience of the disciples was important as it contributed to the working of this miracle. The disciples were indeed concerned about the crowd because a crowd can quickly turn out to be a mob if not managed properly. The disciples have just five loaves and two fish in their hands for such a huge crowd, but they forget that there are other hands here, namely Jesus' hands. With God, nothing is impossible. Bring them here to me, Jesus commands. And he takes our contribution, however modest, and makes it enough, makes it sufficient. In conferring blessings, God often uses what we have at hand and sees that it reaches every hand so that nobody goes back empty-handed. As mentioned earlier, we are living in a world full of hungry people and we pray that Jesus might do something before it's too late. No, Jesus does nothing. He only responds, you give them something to eat. And this invitation of Jesus continues to challenge each one of us today. We, like the disciples, are tempted to believe that we have nothing to offer in the face of overwhelming needs. The church is poor, we argue, but she knows who has plenty. Perhaps she can fulfill her obligation by persuading those who have plenty to share with those who have nothing. Finally, the Eucharistic character of the feast is evident in the verbs 
like Jesus took, blessed, broke and gave. The Eucharistic motif continues even after the meal has been served. The disciples not only distribute the bread but also collect the broken pieces following the meal. This is precious food and the collection of the broken pieces is a respectful gesture of concern for the broken body of Jesus. Whatever happened, it was truly amazing. Five loaves, two fish, more than 5,000 who ate, 12 baskets of leftovers and still all ate and were filled. We just cannot imagine how they were filled except by the grace of God. What a contrast between Herod's gruesome dinner party and the meal that Jesus provides for 5,000. Herod's party is characterized by affluence. Jesus' meal by bread, the most basic of foods. Herod's party is characterized by hatred. Jesus' meal by compassion. The host of Herod's party is a petty tyrant whose concern is his own power and well-being. The host of Jesus' meal is a compassionate savior whose concern is the well-being of those who have come to see him. Herod's party ends in death. Jesus' meal sustains life. The contrast could be more deliberate and complete. Where do I want to be? At Herod's party or at Jesus' meal? conclude our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, thank you for making us aware that love and compassion are necessities and not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Amen. Let us close our reflection, glorifying the Trinity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank Reverend Father Ratan Almeida for sharing his reflections on the Word of God today. Brothers and sisters, we remember all those who are celebrating their birthday today. We join with you in thanking God for the gift of your life and also we pray that God continues to bless you. In a special way, we remember Alric Pinto from Marol, Mumbai, Cyprian Edwin Saldana from Bendur, Mangalore, Natasha Sharon Martis from Toronto, Sunil Pinto from Bellur. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. We also pray for the departed souls of Bridget Martis from Moodbelle. It's the first death anniversary. Valerian Machado from Pernal and Felix Fernandez from Mumbai. May the Lord grant them eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. Have a great Sunday. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.